everybody, and welcome back to, to the Tech Zulu Penthouse here on the roof of Real Office Centers in Santa Monica. We're in the throes of Silicon Beach Fest. Lots and lots of people, lots of amazing panels, and we're actually going to talk about an interesting panel on corporate storytelling right now. And I have here with me Miha Baldwin with Graphically, who joined me on the panel. Miha, what did you think about our panel? It was fun. Uh, I mean, it's still weird to be a panelist and say the panel was great because it means like I'm talking about myself. You, you could talk about everybody else on the panel too. Yeah, no, I think what was really cool about this panel was that the audience was very, very involved and uh, there was good dialogue, which I thought was great. Let's go over some of the key points because I think corporate storytelling is a huge topic right now. A lot of startups could really use some help, um, a lot, you know, a big part of our audience. What makes a good story? Uh, I was going to say a beginning, middle, and end, but I think that's kind of wrong. Um, I think that what makes a good story is the ability to connect emotionally with the receiver, right? Like, mm -hmm. the reader has to love what they're hearing. And um, the example I always use is that my friend Jeffrey, who used to be at Threadless, used to talk about, you know, making your brand your friend. And I think on the corporate level, we forget that friendship and people really matter. And I think a good corporate story is one that, that actually creates friendship and excitement out of it. And I think that's a really good point, and I think, too, that we also take for granted that, or we assume that those bigger stories are for the bigger brands, you know, the, the Nikes and Just Do It or Apple Think Different. I mean, yes, they're major companies now, but little, small companies can come up with that overarching umbrella message that they fit into as well. It, you don't have to be a huge company to do that. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that... Uh, our belief at Graphically is that everybody has a story to tell, um, whether you're a person or a brand or a you know or a Nike, um, and that the reality is is that telling a good story is more about finding the right group to tell it to, um, and being confident in your own creativity. One thing that you said on our panel that I thought really resonated was every few months you have every member of your team write the company story in their own words, and you bring those together, and you compare them, and you get everyone on the same page about where the company's at. I find that really fascinating because it seems like a lot of times the corporate story is devised either by external consultants, which is fine, they can help, but or with just the executive team, and a, a huge piece of that potential story is missing. Yeah, I mean, I think that for us, everybody is an advocate in our in our in our company and it's really important that they all understand what we're doing and and what we're trying to say but more importantly I want them to be passionate about it and if they can't tell the story passionately then you know why are they there and so by forcing them to, to tell the story and then sort of putting it all together allows us to to really see if our story is being told in a way that we really are happy with we also talked a lot about left brain, right brain, and this notion of emotion versus rational brain. And many PowerPoint presentations and whatnot have so many data points and statistics and graphs, and that stuff's needed, but the emotion is needed too. Um, you gave us some really great pointers in terms of what a deck should look like, what, should con what content should be on each of those slides. Do you want to share that with everyone? My, uh, the famous six slide deck? Yes, the six slide deck. So I'll go slow. Um, <laughs> So the best decks that I've ever seen have six slides to them. Uh, the first slide is your cover slide, which is just the name of your company, your logo, and contact info. Uh, slide two is the indication of your problem, but you express your problem in a way that is relatable to more people than just you. Um, the third slide is your solution slide, like what is the solution to that problem? Fourth slide is why your solution is the best. Um, the fifth slide is how is everybody going to make money? So that's your market research. That's, that's all the statistics and data. Yeah. And then the sixth slide is your ask. How much money do you need and what you're going to use it for? And that's it. And if you can't tell your story in six slides, then your story is way too complicated and you perhaps are looking at too many things in order to be successful. Now, you also said something that, that, that dealt with that in terms of what about the person, uh, the company that says, but we have so many stories to tell. What's your response to that? The, the, too many stories, yeah. Focus, right? When you're an early company, it's all about focus. And if you are finding that, you have mul that you're trying to tell multiple stories, it usually comes from the fact that you're afraid that one of your revenue streams isn't correct. And so you're trying to tell a story to everybody, hoping everybody loves you, and what ends up happening is nobody does. So it's much better to focus on one area and uh, one story and get that one group to really resonate with what you're trying to say. And also get them to ask how. Is that what you were saying? 
Yeah, so the, the whole point of, of telling your story or doing this deck is to get somebody to, to respond with the question how, because how is really a thinking question. Yeah. It's like, how are you going to solve this problem? Like, how are you going to achieve that solution? Mm -hmm. And that means that now I'm starting to think about my own solutions to that problem, and I've gone past the why. And for me, why is, why should you do it? And if it's yeah. why you should do it, then it's sort of the questioning you, at, and it's defensive, yeah. and it's a, it's a bad conversation. Right. And let's get into some specifics with Graphically. Where are you at as, as a company? What are you focusing on now? So company's doing great. Uh, we're in year three now. Um, we're nearing profitability, which is always a positive thing. Um, we, uh, we're really focused on building a suite of tools for publishers to be able to distribute, convert, distribute, and promote their content. So we've developed what we consider to be the industry standard tool in uh, getting eBooks created. Uh, which sounds simple, but actually is pretty hard. Yeah. And now we're focusing in on understanding how to create uh, an easier way to discover content mm -hmm. and then to have those people who discover it become fans. Yeah. And you, you threw out some great research during our panel um, as it relates to the way people consume content. Do you want to cover a little bit of that? No, no. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yes, you do. Of course. Um, so one of the things that, that we've realized is that when you look at a tablet, yeah. a tablet is basically a device of distraction. I mean, it's all about trying to pull your, your brain in multiple ways, mm -hmm. whereas a book, you can just read it. Um, and we've got great viewers in the background. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. Um, and so uh, <laughs> that's okay. You it's, come a, it's amazing. People forget there's a camera there. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's L.A. Nobody, there's cameras everywhere. Exactly. Um, yeah, so what we've learned is that because there's so much distraction currently on tablets, is that people are actually buying more books. Mm -hmm. They're just reading less per session, but reading more sessions. How long are they reading each time? Approximately 10 minutes, and they're reading about five to seven pages, depending on whether they're image-based pictures or image-based pages or words. Um, so about a chapter. Think about it. It's like about a chapter, and then they're done. So people are reading before they go to sleep. They're reading while they're on the train. They're reading like in intermittent spots, right? They're reading on the toilet, right? Like they're reading in intermittent. It's true. And so, uh, and so because of that, storytelling needs to shift and change. And if you think about the way that stories were told in Charles Dickens' time, it was serialized. It was chapters, and it was you know, I think somebody brought up Sherlock Holmes and a couple others that had the same kind of idea back in the day. So. When you're telling a story, the idea is that what is the chunk that you can tell that somebody will consume in about seven pages in about 10 minutes, and that gives them the want and desire to find it the next time it comes along. I love that. And why, why, do you, why are you so fascinated with storytelling? Um, I'm a liar. No, I don't know. Um, no. Uh, my grandmother was a was an author. She wrote fourteen books, and uh, I never knew that about you. Yeah, and so she was uh, the consummate storyteller. Would constantly make stories up, and uh, for us, where it kind of started was I would watch her go to do book signings and and talks and whatnot, and she'd be schlepping hundreds of books because she had to sell them to make them. And so the idea was, how could we make that easier? And then with her experiences in the Second World War, was how could I could have collected her story and shared it? So. Um, yeah, so really my grandmother kind of got me thinking about what we're doing now. I hope that you tell that as part of the Graphically story, because if you don't, you're not following your own advice. Uh, I do on occasion. I do, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us, Miha. He came all the way to L.A. from San Francisco because he knows there's a market for tech here. L.A. Tech, Silicon Beach, whatever the heck you want to call it. And we appreciate your time. So thank you so much, Miha. See you soon, yes? Yes, of course. I'll be Miha Baldwin, Graphically. I'm Amanda Kulong here at the Tech Zulu Penthouse Silicon Beach Fest. Be back soon.